Hi, everybody. I'm Zachary Deptawa, Cloud Developer Advocate for Microsoft, and I'm joined by Mishra, Developer Advocate for HashiCorp. And today we're going to be uh, discussing an intro to Terraform or HashiCorp Terraform. So can you give me a little bit of a background on who is HashiCorp? What, what is this is our regular like education campaign talking about HashiCorp. So we make six uh, popular open source tools in three of these distinct spaces, uh, uh, the provision space, the secure space, and the run space. Uh, and what's interesting is like we are much more known for our tools than, than the actual company name. So this is our like regular education campaign. Uh, so if you're like an IT you know, professional working in the system admin space, uh, you'll be either using Vagrant or, or Terraform for provisioning your resources. And then if you, wanna, if you care about security uh, and secrets management, what is your tool? And then the runtime layer is covered by Nomad. And Console is kind of interesting. It kind of connects all the three tools together. So that's the, that's the company. And, and yeah, we're an open source company, and we make these six tools. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, could you give a little background on Terraform? That's what we're going to be talking about. What is Terraform used for primarily? So Terraform's like overarching mission is to kind of provide a, a consistent and a uni unified workflow for provisioning any infrastructure anywhere. Uh, and then the idea there is to kind of capture your infrastructure in like plain text files. Uh, and then Terraform, from th then on, Terraform takes over and kind of you know, manages the life cycle of resources for you. Gotcha. Infrastructure is code. Infrastructure is code. Awesome. That's right. So um, let's take a look at how you get started uh, using Terraform. Um, so we'll just jump over here to some sample code that we have prepared. So. Uh, what we're looking at right now is just a very basic Terraform configuration file uh, that will set up a new demo resource group. It'll create a new demo network uh, with a public and private subnet. And so um, as uh, Mishra mentioned, this is just a, a standardized way, right, of, yeah. of uh, running uh, infrastructure as code. Yeah. Um, so you can see we have a provider, uh, which is Azure RM, that um, is used to make the uh, communication between um, uh, T Terraform and uh, Azure's APIs, right? Yeah, so we, we support all the APIs that Azure Resource Manager supports. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then um, go into a little bit about resources. What is a resource used for? Yeah, so a resource, basically, these, these things like sit under the provider. So uh, in the provider space, uh, you, you might have like a CDN or DNS or anything else you're managing using the API. These resources are like entities that you might be able to manage using Terraform. In, this, in Azure space, it might be a VM or a resource group or a security group. In this case, I think it's a resource group. Uh, so yeah, so here, like you can, you know, you can, as you can see, you can like do things like tag them and give them names and choose a location and so on. Very cool, very cool. Um, so I'm also creating here a resource for a network. So um, as you can see, resources can be completely different, um, you know, things. It's exactly. not, not all the same there. So this is very basic. It's just going to create a resource group. Um, it's going to create a demo network. So something um, important to point out before we go here um, is that you have to have your authentication set up um, to use Terraform. So there's great documentation on Terraform's website, Microsoft um, at docs.microsoft.com, uh, and actually aka.ms forward slash tfhub as well. Um, we've got some great documentation all around showing um, just how to do this. So creating a service principle. Um, you could use your user's credentials to do this, but Creating a service principle kind of gives, gives you a uh, more secure way to do this. You're, you're creating a service principle, and you are um, uh, only using uh, those, those credentials to do that work uh, versus your own user, which is a little bit less secure. So um, as you can see, AZ login, AZ account list, this is all using the AZ CLI. Um, very, very basic, straightforward way to log in here. What you're going to need to get is your subscription ID, uh, your tenant ID, your client ID, and your uh, client uh, secret uh, for, for authentication here. Um, so I've already done that. Let's jump back into the code real quick. So now that I have this, right, I'm in my uh, directory here for this Terraform example. Uh, let's take a look at this directory. So it's, it's basic. I've got a readme in here, and I have that code. Um, so what do I want to do uh, first, Mishra? So the first thing we want to do is kind of initialize Terraform, right? So, so make sure like, you know, we, we have all the Terraform configuration written, which we already do. We hit save, and it's time to run Terraform in it. That's like the first command. Okay. So what that does is kind of initializes all the plugins and all the providers that need to be downloaded. In this case, it's just Azure. You might be using a module, Terraform module. Uh, that will also be downloaded and locally cached somewhere. And now you're, you're good to run a, a Terraform plan, basically, next. Awesome. So yeah. Terraform init will get everything ready for me uh, based on the code that I've written. And then Terraform plan will 
will prepare. For, yeah, so it basically will show you what's going to happen before it actually happens. So this is kind of unique to Terraform. It kind of shows you a plan of like, in this case, we're adding two resources. Uh, in, in some cases, you might just see a tilde sign, which makes uh, it basically tells you that it, we're changing resources. Uh, in some cases, you might see a, a, a minus sign, which means you're destroying resources. So awesome. in this case, we're just adding two resources. So the idea is to kind of have this plan and only this plan run when you go ahead and apply these changes. Very cool. And I want to point something out really quickly. So on this virtual network, I didn't actually set the location. So I used yeah. interpolation here. Um, and it's pulling the uh, location from my resource group, demo one uh, resource group, and basically, um, yeah. generating and pulling that value. Yeah, so Terraform is able to interlink like two resources like that inter inter using the interpolation syntax right there. So it knows that it has to create the resource group before creating uh, the network, basically. Very cool. So what if there are resources that can be created at the same time? What, what happens? So in that case, Terraform actually parallelizes as much as, uh, as many operations as possible that it can physically do with like the relationship given uh, you, know, you might be relating two resources. So it'll, it'll try to like provision at least one. And if you have like 12 Multiple, like 12 resources that can be provisioned at the same time and they're not related, Terraform will go ahead and do that for you. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Um, all right, so now that we've done the plan, um, and I, it's, it's on the back end, it's actually built a dependency graph, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so it's, it's able to build, build this, uh, a, a graph for you based on, based, it's basically a tree. It shows you uh, all the different resources as, as in the edges and kind of relates them uh, like, like we do with the interpolation syntax right there. Very cool. Yeah. So, and this is showing me it's going to add to, so I don't have uh, this network or this resource group right. created right now. Um, so now, just Terraform Apply? Yeah, Terraform Apply. OK. <laughs> So one of the things to note here is like Terraform Apply also in the new versions of Terraform shows you the plan again, just to confirm. Uh, you can use the plan from the plan phase as well. You can save it in a file and use that to apply. In this case, we'll plan again, and then if it looks good to us, we'll say yes. Okay, cool. There you go. So let's say yes. So it's actually building the resources for me. Let's jump over to um, my portal and take a look. So I've actually tagged this. Um, you can see here I've created these tags of an environment demo and build demo 01. And in my portal, I'm actually looking at my uh, demo 01 tag. So as these build, and you can see they're already built, um, I can see my demo 01 network, my demo 01 resource group uh, together there. And that was it. It's, it's already built. It was, it was super quick. Um, so now that we have that, if we wanted to tear this down, yeah. is there a, a, a way to do that? Yeah, one of the things which we mentioned in the introduction is like Terraform really manages the life cycle. So it does, you know, we often provision resources and then forget about them. So it lets you kind of, uh, you know, take care of like actually tearing them down too. So okay. there's another uh, top level command called Terraform destroy that lets you destroy these operations. And again, you know, it'll prompt you whether you want to do this and, yeah. and things like that. So yeah, we can go ahead and try running them if you want. Okay, and before I do yeah. that, um, I do want to point out that Terraform is actually tracking the state in a, in a TF state file. So why can you tell me really quickly why that why is that important? Yeah, so state's really important. So that uh, that one state file tells Terraform about like the 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 actual like status of that resource at that uh, at that like you know at that time uh, at that time, and it kind of lets you track the resource as as it goes from being created to changed to destroy it. So next time you run plan, it'll kind of read this state file and also figure out what's in the in the real world and try to merge the states together and then present you with a plan. So that's how the plans are created. So Very cool. being able to read the state, being able to read the real world and kind of match that together and give you a plan. Very cool. That's super, super powerful yeah. uh, to track state. So let's run a Terraform destroy and uh, just take a look at what happens here. So I can see it's telling me I'm going to delete these two resources. Obviously, this is um, an important step to pay very close attention to, but I do want to delete these. So I'm going to say yes. Let's take a look at the portal and uh, watch as these be rem are, uh, removed by Terraform. Hopefully this works. <laughs> <laughs> the live demos the are live the best demos. The demos are always are the best, I got to say. Yeah, and you can see it's deleting them. Cool. So it just deleted the network. The resource group would be uh, next, obviously. Um, in that kind of uh, dependency order. Exactly. Um, very cool. So that's a really basic demo of, of how to use Terraform um, on Azure. And if you want to have some more information on getting started, like I, like I mentioned, aka.ms forward slash TF Hub, um, or the documentation on terraform.io, great documentation there as well. Um, I highly recommend that you go get started. Uh, go play around with this tool. Um, one thing that we didn't mention, how do you install uh, Terraform? Like it, 
is it an in-depth kind of thing? Yeah, so uh, in, on Azure, you can just get that using the Cloud Shell. So as we, you know, we have a really great partnership with Microsoft, uh, so we are able to produce that. So you just open your Cloud Shell, Terraform should be installed. Uh, on, on, the, on your local machines, you can just download it using the, the download icon on, on the top there. So you can go there, there's downloads available for all the various platforms, including Windows. Very cool, very cool. And um, I can actually show this really quickly. Okay, so now that I have the Cloud Shell open, I can run a Terraform version. And you can see that Terraform is already installed. I didn't have to install Terraform. It already exists inside my Cloud Shell, um, and I can use it just against my resources within Azure. Yeah, it's already configured to, to use uh, all, all your uh, credentials, too. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, and if I run a plan, this is an empty directory. It's not going to show me anything, um, but it will, will show me that it's looking for configuration files. So that's super powerful. Um, I highly recommend that you go check this out and, and play around with this yourself. Um, very easy in to install, very easy to use, and uh, yeah, a lot of great information. Thank you so much for your time, Mishra. Thanks for having me, Zach. Thanks.